Spotlight is a production of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. It seeks to spotlight people, places, and events from around the Diocese of Youngstown that promote the new gospel of joy called for by Pope Francis. Your program host is Father James Corda. Hello and welcome to Spotlight. I'm Father Jim Corda. During this series, we're going to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the Diocese of Youngstown. And joining me in today's show is Monsignor John Zura. Welcome to Spotlight. Thank you very much. We know that you were very instrumental as uh, the chairperson of the committee that really looked into the celebration of the 75th anniversary. And in your uh, experience over these last several months in preparation for this significant milestone in the life of the church, uh, what have you discovered significant about anniversaries? Basically, I think the theme that we have selected, pride in the past, faith in the future, really articulates what we're going to be about during this 75th year. We look at the past and once again, we educate ourselves as to the various histories of our diocese, the individuals that have truly come together to truly make us the body of Christ in this local church. But it's more important that we begin to look at the future, that we begin to envision what the future of our diocese is going to look like as we move towards the 100th. For the 100th, I'm gonna be 83 years old, so, who knows where I will be at that point. I won't tell point. you how old I will be. So, so. <laughs> But let, let's go back to the beginning. We know that the diocese was formed in 1943 uh, and we have Cleveland as our parent diocese. Talk a little bit about how that process happens and why the new diocese was formed here in Youngstown. In 1943, when the diocese was established on May the 15th, we had about 150,000 Catholics with about 89 parishes. So there was a need for a new diocese to be established. And through the leadership of Bishop McFadden and Bishop Walsh and Bishop Malone, uh, the church really grew in our geographical area. Bishop McFadden had the vision and the organizational skills to establish a new diocese. Then it was Bishop Walsh who was the great builder of the diocese with various schools and uh, various parishes. Then the implementation of the Second Vatican Council was the task of Bishop Malone. And Bishop Tobin and now Bishop Murray carry on the work of their predecessors. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the people who make up the diocese and how important it is to remember that, that we are the church. It's just not uh, the Pope and the bishop and the priests and the nuns, but we make up the body of Christ. How important is it for the whole diocesan church to celebrate significant milestones in the life of the church? I had an opportunity once again to read our mission statement. And our mission statement for the diocese basically centers on the rich background of who we are, that we are not the same individuals. We are not this of same culture. We're not of the same race, but we're a very diverse group. And the church is a very diverse group. And it is through the blood, sweat, and tears of our ancestors that we are able to celebrate 75 years. Uh, those are the individuals who dedicated time and talent and treasures to build these magnificent edifices that we worship in today. So we look back and very much pride as to you know what they accomplished and you know now it is our responsibility to carry the future i think one of the great events during this anniversary year is that our young people that are preparing for the sacrament of confirmation come together to not only celebrate the sacrament but to experience a day of retreat that you know how are they going to carry on the legacy and during that day of retreat, they're gonna have an opportunity to learn a little bit about the diocese, what its origin and 
who makes up the diocese, but more importantly, how do we carry on for the future uh, who we are as the body of Christ. A little later on in the show, we'll talk about some of the specifics that uh, are really taking place in our diocese during this whole anniversary year. Uh, and then the middle segment, we are actually going to show the history of the diocese video for those uh, hopefully that will stay with us. But let's go back to um, Bishop Malone. He was the bishop that ordained you and ordained me. <laughs> In these last few minutes of our time together in the first segment, what has been your experience and remembrance and memories of Bishop Malone? I think Bishop Malone was a very forthright individual. Uh, you knew that he was the boss. And because you knew that, there was a sense of security that the church was going to be all right. He had a great uh, flavor for the various churches around us. I remember the evening before his funeral, how the, uh, the believing community of Youngstown came together to celebrate his life. It was just not the Catholic presence, but it was the Methodist, it was the Baptist, it was the various evangelical churches that truly celebrate a man of vision. And, you know, that's one of the great things that, you know, I remember about Bishop Malone, that he truly had a vision for the church. And that vision now is being uh, brought forth mm -hmm. as we celebrate the 75th. Uh, in the 30 plus years that you have been a priest and in the almost 40 years that I've been a priest, we have seen many things uh, become different and change. Uh, and the only constant really in the life of any institution is change. Mm -hmm. And so change needs to be our friend. And in your experience, how can we as a church make the changes that have happened over these many years personal experiences for us that are significant for the future of our church? We have an ability to be very creative. Uh, within the Diocese of Youngstown now, we have parish leaders, and the parish leaders invite us to move on as church. That individual buildings are not closing, but rather there are buildings that still have life and vitality amongst the people of God. And with this creativity, we have an opportunity to bring forth a vision of church that is unique to the Diocese of Youngstown, that is unique to our own specific being. And I think that's, you know, that faith in the future that we're celebrating also, not only the past, but there is a future for the Diocese of Youngstown. And for the folks that are with us, we ask them to please stay tuned. We're going to share the uh, rich history of the Diocese of Youngstown in video form, uh, but we're gonna take a quick break. Stay with us, we'll be right back. The Catholic Diocese of Youngstown was established on May 15, 1943. 2018 marks the 75th anniversary of the diocese. There are six counties which make up the Diocese of Youngstown, Ashtabula, Columbiana, Mahoning, Portage, Stark, and Trumbull. There are five other dioceses in the state of Ohio, Cincinnati being the oldest, Cleveland, Youngstown's mother diocese, Columbus, Steubenville, and Toledo. Youngstown is the smallest in terms of area and the second smallest in terms of population, yet it has a third highest percentage of people identifying themselves as Catholics. Congratulations, Catholic Diocese, for celebrating 75 years with pride in the past and faith in the future. It was in Dungannon, Ohio, in Columbiana County, that the first group of Catholics settled. St. Philip Neri, the first parish in all northern Ohio, was founded in 1817 under the title of St. Paul's Settlement. It was to visit this settlement that Father Edward Fenwick the Apostle of Ohio made his first trip to Northern Ohio. Four years later, Cincinnati was chosen as a sea city in the state of Ohio, and Fenwick was selected as the first bishop. Today, St. Philip Neri remains the oldest parish in the Diocese of Youngstown, but it is also one of the smallest. 
Congratulations, Catholic Diocese, for celebrating 75 years with pride in the past and faith in the future. We are people of God in the Roman Catholic Diocese of Youngstown. Blessed with a rich variety of backgrounds and talents, we are a living reflection of the universal church. Through our baptism, we continue Christ's mission to further the kingdom of God through the human family. We share our living faith by proclaiming the gospel in word and example. Together, we celebrate Christ's presence in worship and sacrament. In a spirit of justice, mercy, and love, we dedicate ourselves not only to minister to the people in the six counties of northeastern Ohio, but also to minister to the world community. The Diocese of Youngstown, which celebrates its 75th anniversary in 2018, was established in 1943. Its humble beginnings can be traced back to 1817 in Dungannon, Ohio, where the first parish in all northeastern Ohio was established. St. Philip Neri was founded under the title of St. Paul's Settlement. It was to this settlement in Columbiana County that Father Edward Fenwick, a priest and Dominican missionary, made his first visit. It would be his job to plant the Catholic Church in young America's 17th state of Ohio. Miles west from Dungannon, in a place called Canton, other pioneer Catholics gathered in that same year to celebrate Mass with Father Fenwick. Six years later, in 1823, the second oldest church in the Diocese of Youngstown would be established at St. John the Baptist in Stark County now one of three basilicas in the Catholic Diocese of Youngstown. In Portage County, around Randolph Suffield, below Kent, German Catholics settled. The first parish established there was St. Joseph in 1831, and a church was built in 1835. Father John Newman, a redemptorist priest visiting the area, was sent to Randolph for a 10-day mission in 1841 to help heal the divisions there. Perhaps that is what made him a saint. The number of Catholics continued to grow throughout the mid to late 19th century, and with it, the number of parishes to serve them. In Trumbull County, St. Mary's Mission was established in 1837. 10 years later, St. Columba Parish was founded in Mahoney County and would eventually serve as the Cathedral Church and Youngstown as its sea city. In 1856, St. Joseph Parish in Astabula was begun. In 1943, the northeast corner of the state of Ohio was established as the Diocese of Youngstown. The Diocese of Youngstown, like all Catholic dioceses, is a community of churches and believers under the leadership of the bishop who serves to unify and coordinate its Christian mission and ministries. The man who was sent to serve the young diocese was James Augustine McFadden, at that time the Auxiliary Bishop of Cleveland. His charge was to do for the six counties in the northeastern part of the state what young Father Fenwick did for those same young communities over a century ago. McFadden's task was largely organizational. A school office was established, a Catholic Charities organization was begun, a tribunal was organized, as were the diocesan deaneries. Lay organizations and councils were founded, and religious communities, like the Society and Daughters of St. Paul and the Oblate Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, were invited to serve the new diocese. Some communities were already present, like the Ursuline Sisters of Youngstown since 1873, the Humility of Mary Sisters known as Blue Nuns, serving from their mother house in neighboring Villa Maria, Pennsylvania since 1864, and the Precious Blood Priests, Sisters, and Brothers. In 1949, Bishop McFadden's labors, combined with failing health, led to the appointment of Bishop Emmett M. Walsh as administrator of the diocese with the right of succession. Walsh came from Charleston, South Carolina. He became the ordinary in 1952 
upon McFadden's death. The Walsh era of the diocese formally ran until his death in 1968. Under his leadership, the high school structure was developed and the Catholic school system was greatly expanded. A tragic fire destroyed the diocesan cathedral in 1954, but by 1958, Bishop Walsh had dedicated the new cathedral, which continues to serve Catholics today. In 1960, Walsh consecrated Father James W. Malone as the first auxiliary bishop of Youngstown. Together, with the assistance of laity, religious, and clergy, they were responsible for shepherding the diocese, which had grown to over 286,000 Catholics in 112 parishes. By the end of the Second Vatican Council in 1965, Bishop Walsh was an exhausted and sick man. Malone became administrator of the diocese in 1966, and in 1968, upon Walsh's death, was named the third ordinary of the Diocese of Youngstown. On his shoulders fell the responsibility for implementing not only the many changes called for by Vatican II, but more importantly, the new style and spirit which the Council called for. The bishops who had attended Vatican II experienced the Church in an entirely new way and were themselves subject to profound conversion. Their challenge upon returning to their diocese was to share their conversion with all God's people and involve them more fully in the life and mission of the Catholic Church. In 1974, William A. Hughes was ordained a bishop and became the second auxiliary for the Diocese of Youngstown. In 1979, he became the ordinary of Covington, Kentucky. In 1980, Benedict C. Franzetta became the third auxiliary for the Diocese of Youngstown. He remained here until his death in 2006. Upon Malone's retirement in 1995, Bishop Thomas J. Tobin, auxiliary of the Diocese of Pittsburgh, became the fourth ordinary of the Diocese of Youngstown. He became the Bishop of Providence, Rhode Island in 2005. 2007, George V. Murray, Ordinary of St. Thomas in the American Virgin Islands, was appointed as the fifth bishop of the Diocese of Youngstown. One of the significant achievements in the Murray era began in late 2014, when the Diocese of Youngstown formally engaged in a consultative effort with clergy and laity, representing all ages throughout the church, to propose actions that would improve parish and diocesan life. In July 2015, the pastoral plan, which grew out of this diocesan-wide effort, was promulgated and identified seven themes that emerge as important to the faithful in the Diocese of Youngstown. Its ultimate goal was to encourage deeper discipleship among the faithful and, in turn, advance the mission of the church in northeastern Ohio. Those themes include service, evangelization, family life, worship and prayer, discipleship, faith formation, catechesis, finances, and administration. This pastoral plan for evangelization encourages the faithful to trust in Jesus Christ and to accept his call to discipleship. The church in Northeastern Ohio has changed considerably from its humble beginnings at St. Paul Settlement near Dungannon, when Father Fenwick passed through in 1817. The church in the Diocese of Youngstown tries to hasten, facilitate, and create the environment wherein the kingdom of God can go forward. And it is in that same spirit that the Diocese of Youngstown celebrates 75 years with pride in the past and faith in the future. Miles from the first Catholic parish in all of Ohio, in a place called Canton, Catholics gathered in 1817 to celebrate Mass with Father Fenwick. Because of limited building space, the Mass was held outdoors under a huge oak tree. The spot near the present church of St. John the Baptist 
which was established in 1823 as the second oldest parish in the Diocese of Youngstown. The oak tree grew there until 1906, when it was struck by lightning. To preserve it, the parishioners took the wood and carved a chair out of it, which remains in the church today. In 2012, St. John the Baptist was elevated to a basilica. Congratulations, Catholic Diocese, for celebrating 75 years with pride in the past and faith in the future. The first Catholic parish established in Portage County in 1831 near Randolph Suffield was St. Joseph Church. Years later, John Newman, who would become the first American male to be canonized, was sent there to give a mission to help heal the divisions that occurred between the German Catholics who had settled there. Perhaps that is what made him a saint. The parish is also noted for its school, which dates back to 1832, being the oldest English-speaking school west of the Alleghenies. The church is also famous for its Lord Shrine, which has welcomed pilgrims since 1927 and is the only exact replica of the world-famous grotto at Lourdes in France. Congratulations, Catholic Diocese, for celebrating 75 years with pride in the past and faith in the future. 33 million Americans have descended into poverty, and as their futures fall, so does our nations. Welcome back to our show. I hope you enjoyed our video on the Diocese of Youngstown and its rich history. Uh, of course, Monsignor John Zura is still our guest. In our first segment, um, I asked you to talk about Bishop Malone and your experience of him. Are there any other priests or religious that stand out in your mind that would be significant as we celebrate the 75th anniversary? Well, I guess one of the characters that I found most interesting is a priest by the name of Father Alan Simpson. He was the first Afro-American priest of the Diocese of Youngstown. He was ordained in 1948, and it was, he came from Iowa, and it was Bishop McFadden who was trying to create a body of priests. So individuals were coming from various dioceses in order to serve uh, the Diocese of Youngstown. And with the issues of racism, especially now that Bishop Murray is working very hard on, Father Simpson basically, because he was black, he was not readily accepted in the Diocese of Youngstown. His first assignment was at St. Patrick's in Kent. And the pastor at that time forced him to live in the attic where there was no heat, um, where he had to eat his meals all by himself. And it wasn't until future pa pastors that basically individuals accepted him as a priest of the Diocese of Youngstown. They looked at his ministerial skills instead of the color of his skin. So, you know, two great characters, Bishop McFadden, who had the foresight in charity to accept individuals that were not like us and Father Simpson, who dedicated his life to priestly ministry, he died at a very early age of 50 from a cerebral hemorrhage. But, you know, he is part of our history. And then we go to some of the religious women who made a significant event. Sister Mary Ann Coes, who started our diocesan library. Sister Rosemary Murray, who, you know, was our vicar for religious. Sister Consolata Klein, that I believe everybody knows, uh, that led Catholic Charities. Before that was the director of St. Elizabeth's Hospital. Mm -hmm. Then we have the favorites of like Father De Marinas and Father Brad Hellman, mm -hmm. Bishop Franzetta, Bishop Hughes, individuals who truly contributed to the church that we now celebrate. Let's uh, go back and talk about Bishop Frenzetta. I know mm -hmm. that you were um, extremely uh, close with Bishop Frenzetta, and he was significant for many of us in this mm -hmm. diocese. Uh, what would be some of your recollections uh, and experience of uh, Bishop Franzetta that you would like to share with the folks who are with us? Bishop Franzetta was a very kind and gentle man. Uh, you know, he was a br very prayerful man. His uh, coat of arms basically um, 
indicates the words of Jesus on the cross before he died, into your hands, Lord, I commend my spirit. And you know, throughout his ministry, not only his Episcopal ministry in the Diocese of Youngstown, but his work within uh, the various finances of the diocese, uh, we now benefit from that, especially we priests. Uh, he set up the, the retirement for us, and that still continues you know, to this very day under his guidance and leadership so many years after his death. In our last uh, few minutes of our time together, uh, there are many other opportunities that will take place that people could experience uh, the great richness of our diocesan church during this anniversary year. Uh, how can they get more information about that? Who do they go to? Where do they search? The various elements that will happen during this uh, anniversary year from Bishop Murray's historical analysis to Sister Regina Rogers' analysis of religious women in the diocese, once again, those will be published, their schedules will be published in the exponent, their schedules will be published also in various parish bulletins. So I would ask our viewers to consult bulletins or the exponent to see when these various presentations in each of the deaneries will be brought forth. We know that we uh, began this celebration uh, with the beautiful Mass at St. Columba Cathedral on May 20th, uh, 2018. It will conclude a year later in June. Talk a little bit about that. Ceremony. Right, that celebration once again will happen on June the 9th, 2019, the Feast of Pentecost. At that time, the uh, Apostolic Delegate or the Papal Nuncio will be invited. Bish Archbishop Schnur from Cincinnati, who is our Metropolitan, will also be invited. Other various bishops from our surrounding areas that have a connection to the Diocese of Youngstown will be a part of us. And what would you encourage the priests of the Diocese of Youngstown uh, to do or to remember during this anniversary year? I think this is truly a year of thanksgiving. Thanking God for not only our priesthood, but for those men that have gone before us that truly set the path for us. Uh, you know, we're eternally grateful for those men who now continue to guide and direct us. So it's a year of thanksgiving, it's a year of remembrance, but more importantly, it's a year of visioning for the future. And in close, in a brief moment, tell us why it's important for us to look to the future. We look for the future because once again, we have had the opportunity to be a part of the present. Now, this is our gift to the church as we move forward. Well, Monsignor John Zura, thank you so much for being with us and God bless you and for all your work during this anniversary year. Thank you. And thank you for being with us. Have a good day and God be with you. Spotlight has been a production of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown, your program host was Father James Corda.